My Thomas Story Library, Elizabeth. This is a story about Elizabeth the Vintage Sentinel Lorry. Sadly, she was left to rust in a shed for a long time. Find out what happened when Thomas's driver found her there. Thomas was taking heavy goods trucks to a cargo ship at Brendam Docks. The ship was leaving at sundown, so Thomas had to work hard to get the trucks there in time. Suddenly, one of his coupling rods broke. His driver saw a shed by the track. I'll see if there are some tools in there, he said. Be careful, that shed looks a bit spooky, said Thomas. Then a voice came from inside the shed. Be quiet out there, I'm trying to sleep. Thomas's driver went into the shed. After a few moments, he came out again. Well, is it a ghost? asked Thomas. No, laughed his driver. It's not a ghost, it's a very helpful surprise. Thomas's driver and fireman took Colin to the shed. Thomas wondered what they were doing. She should be able to get us to the fitter's yard, Thomas heard his driver say. If her boiler holds, replied his fireman, she badly needs repair work. Thomas heard lots of planking noises coming from the shed. What could be inside? At last, out of the shed drove a rather dirty old steam lorry. Thomas, this is Elizabeth, said his driver. So, you're the little puffer that has broken down, said Elizabeth to Thomas. Thomas didn't like that at all. You're a rude old steam lorry, he replied sharply. Actually, I'm a vintage sentinel lorry, replied Elizabeth, and you should be thankful that I'm here to help you. Elizabeth and Thomas's driver went to the fitter's yard. Elizabeth's engine made loud grinding noises. As she drove up a steep hill, her engine got louder and louder. You're not built for hills, said Thomas's driver. Will you make it? I'll be fine, replied Elizabeth. I'm just catching my breath. Before long, Elizabeth reached the fitter's yard. Thomas's driver fetched a new coupling rod and they drove back to Thomas. Elizabeth felt very proud. She realised she had been in the shed for so long that she had forgotten how much fun it was to help others. Thomas was impressed with how quickly Elizabeth had fetched a, had fetched a coupling rod. He was, about to thank, he was about to thank her when she said, Next time, make sure you're not so careless! Now Thomas thought Elizabeth was the rudest lorry he had ever met. He waited in silence while his driver fitted the new coupling rod, then he set off to the docks. Elizabeth, de Elizabeth decided to follow Thomas to the docks. That little puffer has already broken one coupling rod, so he may, w so he may well need my help again, she thought. Elizabeth's engine rattled and groaned as she slowly followed behind Thomas. Soon Thomas was out of sight. But Elizabeth didn't mind. She remembered which roads she had to take to get to the docks. Thomas arrived at the docks just in time. As the goods were unloaded from his trucks, the back controller came over. He looked very cross indeed. Where have you been? He asked. You nearly missed the boat. Thomas told him about it. Thomas told him about his broken coupling rod. He was about to tell him about Elizabeth when she drove up. Oh, it's you, said Elizabeth to the fat controller. Have you learned to have you learned how to drive properly yet? Thomas thought the fat controller would be very angry, but to his surprise, the fat controller said, Elizabeth, the first lorry I ever drove. How marvellous to see you again. Where have you where have you been? Thomas couldn't believe it. Elizabeth and the Fat Controller were friends. Elizabeth told the Fat Controller that she had been left in the shed a long time ago and everyone had forgotten about her. She had thought she would never drive again. The Fat Controller was really pleased that Elizabeth, the Fat Controller was really pleased that Elizabeth had been found. 
he asked Jan Cole, the mechanic, to restore her to her original beauty. Elizabeth smiled happily and thanked the Fat Controller. She could hardly wait to be in full working order again. A few weeks later, Elizabeth drove pa A few weeks later, Elizabeth drove past the Fat Controller station. Her paintwork shone and her engine sound and, and her engine sounded perfect. Hello, she said. Don't you think my new paintwork looks marvellous? You're the grandest lorry in the whole railroad, replied the Fat Controller. Thomas had to agree, and Elizabeth was so happy now she was useful again that she wasn't rude at all. My Thomas Story Library, Cranky. This is a story about Cranky the Crane. He worked at the docks on the island of Sodor. He played tricks on the engines to get them into trouble, but one day, Cranky needed the engines' help. Thomas and Percy liked working at the docks, so when the Fat Controller told them they would be working there for two weeks, they could hardly wait. But when they arrived at the docks, there was a new crane there called Cranky. Cranky was always moody, and he called Thomas and Percy useless little bugs. The two engines were very upset. They told Gordon and James about how rude Cranky had been. To their surprise, James and Gordon backed up Cranky. He's so high up in the air, said James, facing the wind, rain and sunshine, and it's no wonder he looks down and sees you as annoying little bugs. Thomas and Percy hoped Cranky would stop being so mean to them. The next day, Cranky played a trick on Thomas. He told him to move the trucks to the outer track. Thomas was surprised, but he did as he was told. When the Fat Controller arrived, Cranky said, I asked Thomas to put those trucks on the inner track, but he has put them on the outer track where I can't reach them, and Percy won't do as he's told either. The fat controller was furious. He sent the engines back to the station in disgrace. Thomas and Percy were shocked. Cranky was making it all up. A storm raged across the island of Sodor that night. At the fat controller station, Thomas and Percy talked about Cranky. They were upset that the Fat Controller had believed his lies. They wondered if they'd ever be allowed to work at the docks again. If Cranky is going to continue being nasty to us, then I don't want to work at the docks anyway, said Thomas. Percy had to agree. At the docks, the wind and rain were slashing down on Cranky. He wasn't worried though. He thought he was much stronger than any storm. In the shed nearby, Duck, James and Gordon were listening to the storm. They thought they were safe there, but they were wrong. A huge steamer had got loose and it was heading straight for the docks. The steamer ran aground. It charged through the docks, crashing into the shed and knocking over Cranky. Duck, Gordon and James were trapped. They called to Cranky for help but Cranky had fallen onto his side, so he needed rescuing too. Cranky and the engines had to wait for the storm to clear before they could be rescued. The next morning, the Fat Controller went to the docks. Thomas and Percy are coming to help you, Cranky, he said. They'll have you up, they'll have you up again in no time. Oh, thank you, said Cranky. Um, can you tell them I'm sorry that I was so mean to them? So it was you that was causing all the trouble, said the Fat Controller. It seems I owe those engines an apology. Thomas and Percy's drivers tied ropes to Cranky and attached them to the engines. Thomas and Percy quickly pulled Cranky back upright. Cranky was very glad to see the world. Cranky was very glad to see the world the right way up again. He got straight to work clearing away the rubble. Cranky moved the steamer back into the water and it was carefully tied in place. Then it was safe for him to pull the heavy rubble away from the shed so the trapped engines could get out. Duck, 
Gordon and James were very grateful. They had not liked being stuck in the shed. They thanked Cranky for his help. Cranky told them Thomas and Percy had rescued them. Cranky told them Thomas and Percy had rescued him first. I never thought I'd be rescued. I never thought I'd be rescued by a couple of... Cranky was about to say bugs, but he stopped himself just in time. Um, he continued, I never thought I would be saved by a couple of small engines. I'll try not to be rude to you again. Thomas and Percy smiled. They were just about to reply when Cranky said, Now move it out of the way, you mites. I need to get to those trucks. Pa, said Percy. Cranky wasn't polite for long. He's back to bugging us. Percy quickly moved up the track to get out of Cranky's way, but he had forgotten that his ropes were still attached to Cranky. Wait! cried Thomas, but he was too late. As Percy charged forward, the ropes pulled taut and Cranky crashed to the ground with a thump. Thomas and Percy had to pull Cranky up for the second time. Cranky felt very silly. Now Cranky works well with Thomas and Percy. He still looks down on them from his high perch in the sky, but he never but he never calls them bugs or mites. After that stormy night, he knows they can be really useful engines. After all, they had rescued him twice. And if Cranky is ever knocked over again, he knows the little engines will quickly put him back in his place. My Thomas Story Library, Terence. This is a story about Terence the Tractor. When Thomas met Terence ploughing a field, he was very rude to him. But when snow came to Sodor, Thomas found out that Terence's caterpillar tracks could be really useful. Autumn had arrived on the island of Sodor. The leaves were changing from green to brown and the fields were changing too, from yellow stubble to brown earth. As Thomas puffed along, he heard the chug 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 of a tractor at work close by. Hello, said Thomas to the tractor. I'm Thomas, I'm pulling a train. Hello, said the tractor. My name's Terence, I'm ploughing. What ugly wheels you've got, said Thomas. They're not ugly. They're called caterpillars, said Terence. I can go anywhere. I don't need rails. I don't want to go just anywhere, replied Thomas Huffley. I like my rails. Thank you very much. The next time Thomas saw Terence ploughing a field, he called out to him. You've missed a bit over there in the corner, silly old tractor. And he whistled rudely. Terence carried on ploughing and didn't reply. Winter came, and with it, dark, heavy clouds full of snow. A snowplow was fitted to Thomas, but it was heavy and uncomfortable, and he hated it. He shook it and banged it until it was so dented that eventually it had to be taken off. You're a very naughty engine, said his driver, as he shut the shed door that night. The next morning, the driver and fireman worked... The next morning... The driver and fireman worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't make it fit properly. So Thomas had to set out without it. I don't need that stupid old thing, he said to himself. Snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. But as he rode along, the snow kept making his wheels spin, and he found it quite a struggle. He passed Terence in a field. You seem to be having some trouble there, called out Terence. It's a pity you don't have caterpillars, then the snow wouldn't bother you. This time, it was Thomas who didn't reply. Silly soft stuff, silly soft stuff, puffed Thomas as he continued on his journey. And he rushed into a tunnel. At the other end, he saw a heap of snow fallen from the sides of the cutting. Stupid old snow, said Thomas, and charged it. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas as he ground to a halt. I'm stuck. And he was. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods, 
said Thomas sadly. I shall have to stay here till I'm frozen. And he began to cry. <laughs> Just then, who should come chugging along but Terence the tractor? I heard you were in trouble, said Terence, so I've come to help. First, Terence pulled Annie and Clarabel away from the snowdrift. Thank you, Terence. Thank you, Terence. They said, they were very, they were very relieved to be free of the snow, and were sorry that Thomas had been so rude to Terence. Next, Terence came back for Thomas. He pulled and pulled, but Thomas was buried so deeply in the snow that Terence wasn't strong enough to move him. I shall never escape, thought Thomas sadly. The driver and fireman tried to dig the snow away from Thomas, but as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down. At last, Thomas's wheels were clear, but they still spin, but they still spun helplessly when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged, and eventually, with the most enormous effort, he dragged Thomas clear of the snow and into the tunnel. Thomas was very grateful. Thank you, Terence, he said. I think your caterpillars are splendid. I'm sorry I was so rude to you before. My caterpillars are certainly useful, said Terence. But I can't go very fast. I can pull a passenger train like I can pull a passenger train like you can, Thomas. Well, my wheels wouldn't be Well, my wheels wouldn't be much use for ploughing a field, replied Thomas. And with that, Terence returned to his farm, while Thomas puffed tiredly back to the engine shed. From then on, Terence and Thomas were good friends. Whenever they passed each other, they always exchanged a cheerful greeting, and they were never rude to each other again. My Thomas Story Library, Scarlowy This is a story about Scar Lowy the Narrow Gauge Engine. Scar Lowy first came to my railway 100 years ago. Read about the troubles he had when he was brand new and couldn't stop bouncing up and down. Scar Lowy worked on the little railway on the island of Sodor. He was 100 years ago, but he was still a useful engine. All the other engines liked Scar Lowy and he would tell them stories about when he was young. Everyone's favourite story was about the time Scar Lowy first came to the little railway. Scar Lowy was built at the same time as another engine called Reneus. They were both red with four wheels each. We look wonderful, said Scar Lowy proudly. We will pull coaches and everyone will want to ride in them, replied Reneus. Scar Lowy and Reneus were both going to work on the mountain line of the little railway. But Scar Lowy was finished first, so he had to go to the little railway alone, leaving Reneus behind. The two engines felt sad when they said goodbye to each other. Scar Lowy was sent away on a ship. It was very wobbly. At the port, they used the ship's cranes to lift Scar Lowy onto the shore. The ship's cranes were called derricks, and they nearly turned Scar Lowy upside down. How dare they treat me like this, said Scar Lowy crossly. He was left hanging from the derricks for a long time. At last, an engine arrived to take him to the mountain line. About time, huffed Scar Lowy. It was dark when Scar Lowy arrived at the mountain line. He felt lonely and miserable. I wish Reneus was here, he said sadly. Next morning, there were trucks everywhere. They rattled and roared past Scar Lowy. There's no engine pulling them, said Scar Lowy in surprise. The trucks come down the mountain by gravity, explained the manager, but the empty ones need up, but the empty ones need taking up again. That's why you've come. What? said Scar Lowy crossly. 
I don't want to pull crux! Can't I pull corkless, sir? Certainly not, said the manager. We have to finish building this line, and for that, we need crux. The inspector is coming to look at the line soon. Scarlowy was furious. When the workman tried to start him, his fire wouldn't burn. He made no steam, he just blew smoke at them. They tried again the next day, and the next, and the next. But Scarlowy wouldn't do a thing. Finally, the manager lost his temper. We're not going to look at your soggy face all day, Scarlowy, he said. We'll leave you alone until you're a better engine. They covered Scarlowy with a big sheet of tarpaulin and went away. Scarlowy felt even more lonely and unhappy. Nobody talked to him. At last, the manager came back. I hope that you will be a better engine from now on, he said. Yes, sir. I will, sir said Scarlowy earnestly. From then on, Scarlowy worked very hard, and although he sometimes got too excited and would bounce up and down, the manager was very pleased with his efforts. By the time Reneas arrived at last, the line was ready. Scarlowy was delighted to see his old friend. Reneas soon settled in. One day, while he was shunting trucks, Scarlowy hurried up to him. I'm going to pull the inspector's train today, said Scarlowy. Be careful not to bounce, said Reneas. The inspector won't like that. But Scarlowy was so excited, he just couldn't stop bouncing. Scarlowy had to take the inspector up to the top of the mountain and then back down again. The upper journey went well and Scarlowy felt very happy. When it was time to go down, Scarlowy was really excited. As they went faster and faster, he began to bounce. The coaches were scared. He's playing tricks, they said. Bump him, bump him. Just then, Scarlowy gave an extra big bounce and the inspector lost his footing. He fell into a bush on the side of the line. The driver stopped the train. The inspector was not hurt. But he was very cross. From now on, you will stay in the shed, he said to Scarlowy. You are a bad engine! When the inspector told the manager what had happened, the manager felt sorry for Scarlowy. He knew he, he knew that he had been, he knew that he had been trying very hard to be good. What Scarlowy needs is an extra pair of wheels, he said. Then he won't bounce any more. So Scarlowy was sent off to the works. When Scarlowy came back, Reneas hardly recognised him. He had six wheels and a brand new cab, and he looked very smart. Now let's see what you can do, said the manager. Sure enough, Scarlowy found it much easier to travel along smoothly without bouncing. From then on, Scarlowy pulled coaches and trucks up and down the track as easily as anything, and he didn't bounce his passengers once, and 100 years later, he was still as good as new. My Thomas Story Library, Mavis This is a story about Mavis the Diesel Engine. Mavis worked at the quarry shunting trucks. She was bored with her job, until one day, she was given the chance to make it more exciting. Mavis was a diesel engine who worked at the quarry. She shunted trucks for other engines to collect. Mavis was a young engine, and she liked to get her own way. She thought she knew better than everyone else. Every day, Mavis would put Toby's trucks in a different place, so he had to search for them. Trucks should be where I can find them, said Toby crossly. Nonsense, said Mavis. I can't waste time arguing, said Toby. If you know so much, then take the trucks yourself. Mavis was very pleased. Taking trucks on Toby's branch line made her feel important. So the next day, Mavis set off along the branch line with Toby's trucks. 
but the trucks didn't like Bossy Mavis. It's frosty today, let's play a trick on her, they whispered. Mavis travelled happily along Toby's line. Ahead of her was a level crossing, so she stopped carefully. I'm so good at this, I don't need silly old Toby, she laughed. But she didn't know what the trucks were planning. When it was time to move again, the trucks whispered to each other, Hold back! Hold back! Mavis tried to set off, but her wheels just spun. She couldn't get a grip on the frosty ground. The troublesome trucks giggled and giggled. The drivers of the cars and lorries waiting at the level crossing were getting very angry. But there was nothing Mavis could do. Then, Mavis saw Toby approaching the distance. Then, Mavis saw Toby approaching in the distance. He had come to help. Having trouble, Mavis? He smiled. Mavis felt cross and silly. She had boasted to Toby that she knew best, and now she was stuck, and Toby had to rescue her. Toby was coupled to Mavis. He puffed and slipped, and at last, he got Mavis and the trucks moving. Mavis hardly helped at all. She didn't, she didn't even say thank you. When Mavis got back to the quarry, the fat controller was very cross with her. You are a naughty engine, he said. You will stay here in future. Mavis felt angry. She thought the quarry was boring. She wished she could go on Toby's branch line again. Soon spring arrived on Sodor. It was a very busy time at the quarry. Every day, Mavis got the trucks ready for Toby, but she was never allowed to take them along Toby's branch line. Then one day, Mavis had an idea. She said to the troublesome trucks, When we get to the beginning of Toby's line, please will you bump me? Then I'll be on his line, whether he likes it or not. Yes! 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 Giggled the trucks. I'll show that fuss pot Toby, said Mavis to herself. But when the time came, Mavis was busy elsewhere, so Toby shunted, so Toby shunted the trucks himself. Never mind, the trucks whispered to each other. Let's bump Toby instead. So they gave Toby a big bump. He rushed onto his branch line much too fast. His driver and fireman were knocked over. Toby was out of control. Toby couldn't stop. He rushed over the level crossing. Luckily, there weren't any cars there. Up ahead, there was an old bridge. The river had flooded, and part of the bridge had been washed away. If Toby didn't stop before he reached it, he might fall into the river. As Toby approached the bridge, the rails stretched across the... As Toby approached the bridge, the rails stretched across the gap, just like a tightrope. His driver braked hard, but Toby slid along the track. His brakes squealed. He used every bit of his strength and stopped. Just in time. Mavis felt terrible. It was all her fault. So she rushed to the rescue. First, she pulled the trucks back up the track. Then, she helped pull Toby carefully away from the bridge. I'm sorry, Toby. She said, it's all my fault. Never mind, Mavis, said Toby kindly. Thank you for rescuing me. After that day, Mavis and Toby became good friends. Mavis still bossed the trucks around it. Mavis still bossed the trucks around at the quarry, but she looked but she always listened to Toby's advice. And sometimes, for a special treat, Toby would let Mavis take the trucks carefully along his branch line.